Welcome everyone. My name is Julia Toothaker and I am the career coach and strategist behind Ride the Tide Collective, the podcast and the company. This is a career focused podcast that helps ambitious professionals strategize and take action to control their career in a way that aligns with their personality and their values. This season, I am embracing the collective part of my company name, and I've invited on various coaches and experts to talk about topics that impact career development and career decisions. And this is one of my favorite topics because if you've been around for a while, you know that I am a huge proponent of Gallup Strengths. And my guest today is Kyle Johan Baker. He is an organization and organizational <laughs> leadership and well being consultant who uses Clifton Strengths to bring out the best in others. In a world of endless pathways and options, he encourages the people he coaches to observe what it is that truly makes them come alive even if that is a different path than the person next to you. And hint, you if you're doing it right, it often will be. Kyle, I am so excited to have you here. We've known each other, I think, for a year or two now, maybe? <laughs> Just over, yes. Yeah, and I have to tell the story of how we met because I think it is like charming and fun. We met in an Instagram Reels challenge <laughs> about a year ago that we were in with another person that they were running. And so we got to know each other because I think we were the most engaged in, <laughs> in this challenge. And so we were sharing each other's content and, and our content really complements each other as well. I know that I use strengths in some of my coaching programs. And obviously you're talking about career when it comes to strengths as well. And so now we are in a group together called Top Coach. And that has been really fun because we've gotten to know our businesses and what we do even better. So thank you so much for being on the podcast. Yeah, thank you. I love a good chance to talk about strengths and how it can really have a high impact on your career and beyond into your life as we're finding ways to really engage and show up for ourselves and other people. Yes, yes. Okay. I have to tell a quick story before we jump into the questions because this just happened today. So I think it's just okay. really good timing. I was having a conversation with someone and I asked them what their strengths were because I knew they had taken it and they had learner and input together. And immediately I was like, oh, mm -hmm. and they were like, what, what do you mean? Oh, and I was like, well, based on the questions that you're asking me and your strengths, I now understand why you are asking the questions that you're asking, why you're concerned about the things that you're concerned about. And this wasn't even like a career coaching call. This is not a prospective client. This was just somebody I was having a conversation with. So when we talk about incorporating strengths into life and how we operate, it can happen at any point in time. Yes. I love those moments when somebody shares a couple of their top strengths and either I may have just met them or we've been in a group together for a little while. And especially when you've been working with strengths at the level and depth that I have been for the past years plus, you get this intuitive knowledge and it's very quick that I can identify this is why you're doing this because your natural gifts, the things that you love are guiding you here. It's where you can live your best life, do your best work. And it's where you really feel like you're alive. Yes. Yes. Also. Okay. One thing I forgot to mention about you, you are actually trained from Gallup, the big certification that Gallup gives out around strengths. And I feel like that's really important to mention because a lot of people do work with strengths, but they have not done this in extremely intensive training that you have done. And that's, again, one of the reasons that I wanted you to come on because you have this really wonderful certification. So I want to say that for the audience, because I think understanding credentials and where people come from and why they're doing this work is so important. So I just have to put that little caveat in there for you. Yeah, no, I've been working with Clifton Strengths both on a personal and professional level for close to, I did the math earlier today and I was like, oh, it has been just about, a, or I think a little over a decade now. Mm -hmm. And the past two years, past two and a half years has been as a certified coach, getting to work with organizations, 
individuals and it's something that I would not trade for the world. I would choose strengths over almost anything else. Yes, I love hearing that. Okay, I want to kick us off with a question that I think a lot of people ask themselves, but not really in open conversation. So I feel like we can talk about it here and hopefully somebody's like, I've always wondered that. And that is, you know, we're talking about strength, so we're trying to keep it positive, but there's always a focus on the negative, which is where I think strengths was kind of birthed out of. And so why do you think that there is such a big focus on weakness within our society? Yeah, I remember that still is my least favorite interview question that will pop up from time to time. I'm like, Y'all, why are you asking me about my weaknesses? There's something so much more abundant that we could be spending our time talking about and exploring. And I mean, I don't necessarily have the answer for you, but I know that growing up in, at least in American culture, we're always obsessed with how you can improve, what you could be doing better. And there's and part of like a core reason, core message that I have with my work is centered around enoughness. And so many of us spend time thinking, I'm not enough for this. I'm not good enough to be in this place. I can't apply for this job because I don't have enough skill. And so we spend all of this time as like a culture just exploring that Maybe you're not enough and sowing this, these seeds of discontent. And it, the question itself, I think, comes from a perpetuation of we think that if we are going to be successful, we must overcome these weaknesses. And that we think that weaknesses, if we can explain how we're going to be better, how we're going to improve these weaknesses, suddenly we're superior beings. But Really, in my eyes, the more that we spend time focusing on weaknesses, the more likely we want to disengage and maybe leave our job, maybe end a relationship, or who knows what, but you're feeling disengaged, you're not excited to be here, and you're ready to just like throw up the deuces and say, bye, not here, goodbye. And so I think that that is a a falsehood that we've lived by is that weaknesses are going to give us the answer when in reality strengths strengths are the true hero of our story they are the person they are the thing that is going to help lift us up feel like we are truly enough and reach those goals lifestyle that we want to live Yes. Oh my gosh. We're just, okay. We're, we're going there straight in the <laughs> beginning. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Okay. I have, so, I have so many things that I am thinking about right now. Where do I even start? Uh, you just hit it absolutely out of the park with that answer, because I feel like I get people that come to me as a career coach and it's like, well, I'm not good at this and I'm not good at that. And I'm not good at that. And I'm like, okay, then don't, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Why are we focusing on the thing that you don't like doing? Don't yep. do it. And it's almost this, you know, oh, the light bulb goes on. They never thought that they could choose a career, not doing the thing that they were doing. Mm -hmm. And I remember so early on, this was before I learned about strengths and strengths was very pivotal in my growth as a person and in my career. That's why I, I will preach Heard strengths that. all mm -hmm. day long. But early in my career, I got into sales positions because it was like, oh, that's, you know, pretty decent money. For some reason, people were like, oh, you'd be so good at sales. Like you're so personable and all of that. I hated it. I hated it. It was so hard for me. I'm an introvert. It was hard for me to just like put myself out there. I had so much anxiety around it. It was the absolute worst experience I've ever had. And I got training in it. So if we talk about, okay, let's build up those weaknesses. I was like, okay, I'm not good at this. I'm uncomfortable. Let me do this intensive training. And I did that. And I still was not happy. And I was mm -hmm. so, oh, it was so bad. And when I learned about my strengths, I was like, oh, well, yeah, this is not, 
yeah, this is not it for me. I don't have the strength. I mean, I think you can apply strengths to any situation, which I understood how to do later. But what I realized when I was evaluating that skill and that process was I am not good at the front end of sales. So that initial outreach and all of that, not my strength. If mm. you got me into a conversation, I could close. And so now when I talk about skills or not, not skills, when I talk about sales, I say, you know what? Like my strength in sales is that I'm a really good closer, mm. but I would prefer that somebody else build me the list or the contacts or, you know, the warm contacts and all of that. And yeah. I shifted my language from, I suck at sales. I am not good at this to here's the part of this that I'm really good at. And here's why. And I use some of that strengths language within it. So I, oh my gosh. Yes. Focusing yeah. on strengths. Ah, oh, so good. Uh, I remember like in college, there was one, there was a pivotal speaker that came to campus and the title of the presentation, I thought this was the stupidest thing when I heard it yet, yeah, like still went because it was leadership development. I'm obsessed with leadership development and growth, but the name of the presentation was stop doing things you suck at. And I was just like, well, duh, of course, I'm going to stop doing things that I suck at. But it also still now, again, like 10 years later, I'm still continually understanding what that means, because mm -hmm. what you were told to do, what we are often told to do is learn somebody else's way of doing things and become a master at that. If we can just learn that method to do front end sales, the whole process, because somebody else has mastered this at one point mm -hmm. in time, then... I can suddenly be good at it. But what that misses out on is that we're following somebody else's path. We're doing it the way that somebody else has been there before. And one of these, an adage that I've heard recently is that if something is easy, odds are like, or at least like if you have a clear, it's here it is. If you have a clear path in front of you, odds are you might be on the wrong path because you're doing something that somebody else says. Now, that doesn't mean that if you're using your strengths, it has to be hard, but you're navigating for yourself. You're deciding your road trip as you go because you're taking into account what you do. You're avoiding, hopefully, or like avoiding or managing those things that you suck at. There may be times where you have to do some aspects of those things, but really the major pit stops along the way are focused on your strengths as you're centering and figuring out where exactly you want to go and how you're going to do it. Yes. Oh my gosh. I, I love that. That is so great. Okay. As you're talking, I'm realizing not everybody probably knows what strengths is. Um, oh, yeah. Can you give like an overview of what it is and how it's used? Yeah. So if you haven't heard of like Clifton Strengths before, it's the bit most basic way we can describe it is it's an assessment to, that can tell you your top five or your full like 34 strengths in order. Some people will see this and they think it's another cute assessment to find out which Harry Potter character you are or like which or like which house you belong to at Hogwarts but it's so much more than that like you can still get your results and you can say oh cute like look at me and my top strengths but the real work happens as we start to read and understand because what it's showing you is it's showing you your natural talents you're take or like you're answering the assessment itself is 177 questions so you hear that and you may like faint and say my goodness I can't do something like that that, but it's asking you about yourself and understanding your natural tendencies. And what it's doing is it's uncovering your talents, those things that you do even without thinking. So you may get your assessment results and you say, Kyle, that that's not unique. Like everybody can do this. But truth be told, this is actually something very unique, especially this combination of strengths mm -hmm. in the order that you have. You are like statistics say that you are like one in 33 million. So the odds, statistical odds of somebody having the same exact strengths in the same order is one in 33 million. So really, I see this as a real, a unique way 
to understand your contributions to your personal life, your way that you gain energy, excitement, and that you can find ease, flow, and happiness in your life and work. Yes. Oh my gosh. That was like such a good summation (laughs) of what strengths is. And I think just the focus on the positive. You know, when I talk to clients about this assessment, I only offer it in uh, one of my coaching programs. But when we talk about it, I say this is one of my favorite assessments because it focuses on the positive. Are there shadow sides? Yes. But we really are using the information to look at what your talents and strengths are. And I just, I love that because when so many people in their career, a lot of times once they get to me, there's something going on, you know, they're trying to figure something out. And somewhere along the line, someone has told them, you're not good at this, you're not good at that, you know, whatever. And so they're Mm -hmm. so bogged down with the negativity that I love having an assessment that just helps lift them up and let them go, oh, that's, that's what that was. Like I had that moment when I took this assessment, like, oh my gosh, it's probably been 12 or 13 years now, maybe even longer than that. And I remember thinking, oh, these are things that I got criticized for, Mm -hmm. but are actually strengths. I just couldn't articulate that. Mm -hmm. And it was so helpful to have a new language to be able to go, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. And I feel really good about that. And I'm going to focus my energy on situations and positions that allow me to live into this set of strengths. Yeah. And I think you provide like a really great point is that sometimes people will get their results and they'll say, no, no, like Julia, this is a weakness here. And also you provide a valid point with saying that you like, you think this is a weakness, but with strengths, our strengths have like different ways that they can live. They can live where they are underutilized. They can live kind of in this place where it's got this happy medium. And then there's this place where they can be overutilized. So for me, for the longest time, one of my top fit strengths is futuristic. So mm-hmm. I love dreaming and visioning and getting people to buy into the future. I'm all about what's next and how are we going to get there? But mm-hmm. before I started using strengths, I catastrophized like no other. I w- obsessed and wanted to know exactly what was happening because I was like, well, I like knowing what's happening in the future. So I need to predict the future. I w- am not clairvoyant. I can like recognize and feel energy in the room, but like just because futuristic is my strength, that doesn't mean that I tell the future. And so with working with a strengths coach, part of what happens is you're finding that way so that it lives in this happy medium so that it feels like a strength because these are natural tendencies, natural gifts that you have. And if left unkept, if left untamed, they can bring you to this place where you are dissatisfied and you are resentful towards a part of yourself that's like so recognizable by the way that you go through life. Right. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh, that is, uh, you're so insightful, Kyle. (laughs) (laughs) Get me in spaces like this. And this is where the magic happens. No, it's so great. And so here's, what's funny. You know, we know each other from I would say a professional standpoint in that we talk about our businesses, but I so rarely get to hear you actually talk about strengths and I'm just completely captivated. I'm like, this is so wonderful. I just love hearing you talk about it because I feel like once somebody understands this part of themselves, you know, so you're talking about catastrophizing as, you know, being futuristic. I had the same thing with learner. You know, I have learner as one of my strengths. And I think I talked about this on your podcast. You know, once I understood that strength, oh man, I was able to pick out behaviors that aligned with it. And I was like, ooh, I can see where this can go off the rails really quickly because I like over, um, I over research a lot of times where I go down like a research rabbit hole or I just get excited to learn about a bunch of different things. And so I'll want to try things like, oh, let's do this. Let's do that. 
And I remember this year I was like, no, we are not going off the rails. We are not going off the plan. <laughs> like we're, we are going to focus. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to have like a squirrel moment. We're going to try to, you know, work that out. But then I also have to think about if that strength is not being fed, mm. you know, what does that mean as well? And so I have to find other avenues to make sure that it's happening. Cause that is one of my strengths that has held strong, regardless of how many times I've taken the assessment, that one has stayed, it's never been number one, but it has always been in there. And so I know that it's something that it really just lives inside of me. And I have to understand how I'm utilizing it on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. No, uh, I mean, like, and I think about when it comes to our career and our life, when you talk about feeding your strength is sometimes I know when I've been dissatisfied in the past with my job, it's because I'm not actually using my strengths at work, or I'm being asked to do things that don't align with my strengths. And so ways that you can, if you're in a role, you feel dissatisfied, you're not able to make an immediate shift right now. What I always talk with my clients about is how can we start using our strengths now? Because dissatisfaction comes from not being able to be yourself. What are ways that you can engage with your strengths? You might be in a role where you're like, Kyle, so if you're like me, your top strength is futuristic and you're like, I'm not in charge of the direction for my unit, for my area. But the question is like, what are big and small ways that you can integrate your strengths? Is it five minutes a day? Or if it doesn't feel capable to do at work, how can you integrate this in your life? Is it in the place of futuristic? Is it planning something for the weekend? having an activity it is is it a vacation in august to go to disneyland so what are these ways that you can engage your strengths to make it so that like you can show up engage in life right now and continue to make your career decisions what's next from a place where you feel like your heart, your mind, your body is full and you can really make these intentional conscious de decisions for your life. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think that's such a good summation of that because so often, you know, people look at their career and it's like doom and gloom. You know, mm -hmm. I got into this thing and I don't really want to be here. And my manager doesn't like me and I don't like what I'm doing. And, you know, it's like the negativity, right? The, the weakness side of that, you know, all this negativity. But once you understand this assessment and once you understand your talents and your strengths, oh my gosh, the application, it can be so immediate. And I think that's what I love about this assessment is it's also the the writings for it are easy to digest and mm -hmm. i think that that's so important when it comes to assessments because there are so many assessments out there i know you know i'm certified in a couple of other things there are so many assessments out there that are complex and complicated and hard to understand and people can't you know see the immediate application and as we're talking i'm like oh my gosh this one is one of the easiest to implement straight away. Yeah. I mean, and I'm even like grabbing a book off my bookshelf. So <gasps> like, so one. like, I mean, mm, let's see, it's not adjusting to the camera, but <laughs> if you're listening, you don't got no camera. So it's a strengths-based leadership. And what I love about almost all of the Gallup books is that they start with, I mean, like this one here, it's, a hundred pages in the front are like all about Gallup. It's all about the assessment or whatever topic the book has. And then the second half of the book, or in this case, I think it's more like the second two or like the two thirds after mm -hmm. the first third of the book is just all about each of the strength it tells mm -hmm. you about so like leading with ideation how to build trust with somebody how to show compassion for somebody that has ideation provide stability create hope and like how to lead others who have this is that all of these resources they are like they are timeless in this way mm -hmm. that 
you can st- continue to understand it. And it's meant to, if you're managing others, if you're managing yourself, you can learn about this. You can see some of the pitfalls, some of the things that can happen if your strengths are left unkept and all overutilized and find ways to actually put this into practice because mm-hmm. it's a tool that's meant to have impact and is accessible in this way. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. So that's one of the books that I recommend to people all the time. If, if I feel like they need strengths because I don't do individual coaching on it outside of one of my programs. And so that's the one, cause I feel like it gives additional context mm-hmm. versus some of the other books. It like just talks about the strengths or it's another topic or something like that. I feel like that one oh, is so clear in, especially if you're in you know, if you're using it for career and leadership and all of that, I think it's a really wonderful book to have. So I second that highly recommend, and I'll put a link for that too, into the show notes for this, because if you want to just get a taste of it, if you want to take the assessment and kind of look it over yourself, I think that's the best book to start. But I also want to give a nod to what you were saying about uh, teams and managers. And for those who don't know, I don't know if I said it in the in the intro, but you work with teams and corporations and you do presentations around strengths and all of that. And I will tell you, I have used strengths in pretty much every work scenario um, since I started in higher education. And as a manager, to understand your team's strengths and where everybody falls and what just lights them up and all that in a really positive way, right? So instead of focusing Mm -hmm. on what they're not good at, really understanding what they're good at and helping them hone in on that. You don't have to be trained to have those conversations. It's just getting them to articulate that. And I think that that, if you are a people manager out there, I highly recommend doing this assessment and calling Kyle and having him come in and work with your team, because it, to me, it was such a game changer to understand where people were coming from. Yeah. No, I mean, this fall, like I just did a, a training for a team of people, like a team of managers who manage managers that like, yeah, have this whole area, but like with this, it's something that totally like Julia said, you can do this at a super basic level, have your team take the assessment, have them share their strengths, talk about what their strengths mean to them. And that's a way that you're building relationships. You're bringing this back to who we are, how we can engage. And even the the person that hired me to work with the managers of managers, they, like, they were a newly formed team and trying to figure out so what is each person's specialty? How are we going to have the highest impact on others and allow people to really live in their strengths? Because they told me they're like, you know, this is a newly formed team, but I see this team staying together for five, 10, 15 years. And I'm going to make sure that this is a longstanding team that people feel like they are committed for a reason because they're using their strengths. So if you're leading building teams, starting with strengths is a place that you are helping people feel included, understood, recognized. At the end of every session that I hold for strengths while talking, whether it's one-on-one as a group, you can see people kind of just, they have this at peace. They're kind of just nodding and smiling like, you get me. Mm -hmm. I like this. This is nice. And for some people, like I, this past time was with a bunch of mid-career professionals in their, we'll just say like 40s to 60s. I don't, I don't actually know. I'm not good at guessing ages, but mid-career professionals is our, I'll put it. And a lot of them seemed like they were seeing, being seen for the first time. And y'all, that that's way too long for somebody to be mm-hmm. seen in their work and understood. We mm-hmm. want to build that connection. We want people to feel like this is more or like, it's not that we need our work to be everything, but it's more than just a job. We are seen for the people that we are. And that makes us more committed to our work. It makes it easier to show up, engage and get our work done quicker so that life can really exist. Yes. Yes. Okay. 
I want to touch on something because I think that it's so relevant to this conversation. This is a theme that I've seen throughout this season as I've been uh, interviewing different experts and coaches. Yes. And it's talking about the impact that COVID had on our life, on just how we function, what we think, um, and not for... Not everyone had that epiphany over COVID, but I think a lot of people did. And I know I have a lot of people coming to me saying, man, after that happened, everything shifted in my life. And what I thought I wanted is not what I want now. And there's a lot of loss, but also a, I have no idea who I am. And I will tell you, I was at a place Mm. in my life that I felt like that when this assessment came into my life Mm. and it, Ooh, I'm getting, I just got goosebumps saying that. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) The realness here. Oh my. Yeah. But the impact that it had for me to look at who I was and go, Oh, this is me. And it was this really wonderful snapshot of where I was at that point And it allowed me to make some decisions where I was like, well, I can totally see now why this career path was not working for me because I wasn't in my strengths, like you said earlier. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you're in that place of, man, I just, I do not know who I am. I do not know what is going on. I don't have the language because I feel so disconnected from myself. I feel Mm -hmm. like this is a really wonderful assessment to help bring you back and like almost reintroduce you to yourself, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I mean, so, I mean, speaking towards like people and how they have felt over COVID, what's gone on. So there's some Gallup research. I don't have the numbers in front of me, so don't quote me on exact numbers. I'm just going to tell you generally. So Gallup did some research about employee engagement. You've heard me talk about engagement several Mm -hmm. times already, but we're talking about how people are present, showing up for work, excited, feeling like they are part of an organization or a team. And funny enough, so the pandemic began or like formally began March 2020. And when we all went remote and were working for a while, there was a funny thing that happened. Employee engagement mm, skyrocketed. It 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 increased. Our people felt like we were more engaged. We were excited for work. Mm. We had balance going on in life. And then just six months later, suddenly employee engagement across the U.S. started to take a, well, a gentle nosedive. And since then, it has been on a steady decline for the past three years and Mm. has not gone up. Additionally, last summer, Gallup came out with some additional research that, so they also asked people about generally, how do you feel about like each day from one day to the next? Mm -hmm. And as the, or like for the US, we have had an increase in the amount of time that we feel like sadder than we did the previous day, more frustrated, angry, and we're not feeling engaged in this process, which is part of why I think there are a lot of people that are ready and willing to say that this isn't working for me and I need to figure out what actually work with me, work for me. And it's not just that, like, I think some people will think I need a job that fulfills my life purpose. And I'm actually going to like go semi against the grain, like, I, I love life purpose. I'm a futuristic person. So like, that's always something that I talk about, but really I think what people need is they need a job that aligns with their strengths and that meets their needs financially because it's what's helping us so that we can show up, engage and be present because we know that we're going to excel at what we're doing. We're probably going to get our work done quicker than if we were working at a job that doesn't align with our strengths, Mm -hmm. which means that hopefully we have space for us to exist. We have space to be flexible and say, oh, y'all, I got a doctor's appointment today. Or, ooh, my kid has a recital tonight. I need to go to that. Do kids even do recitals anymore? But yeah, (laughs) probably. (laughs) But I mean, like the case is that like life is able to exist more freely because we are working efficient and working in ways that allow us to either rest, show up, be present with what we're doing. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh, Kyle, this is 
This is gold. I'm going to have such a hard time pulling clips for this episode because it's, <laughs> it's so, so good. Okay. So I feel like this is a really good segue into specific actions. So in this season, one of the things that I'm trying to do is really resource the listener with specific actions around the topics that we are talking about. So I think we've touched on some of the actions that we had planned, but if you want to just go and reiterate some of that, I think that'd be helpful helpful to give our listeners just a summation of strengths. Yeah. I would start off by buying a book from Gallup. So at least I haven't bought a book in the past like couple of months, but traditionally, if you buy a book at the back of the book, there's a code to take a strengths assessment. So buy a book that has a title that you read a little bit of and you say, ooh, I think I might actually read this book. Mm -hmm. Buy one of those books, take the assessment and read through your assessment. Your assessment will give you two reports. So one of them is like a textbook report telling you the generic things that go for everybody. That's great and wonderful. And then you're going to get a customized report that tells you a little bit more about like what you do. I remember the first time I got it, I was like, excuse me, like, how do you know that I was just saying this to my friends? Like, that's not cool, but it'll provide a customized report. And what I think you should do is go through, read that stuff, highlight the things that you resonate with. And instead of just living by the Gallup definition, live by your definition, because that's mm. really the work that I do is all about you. This is a customized approach. Strengths is not meant to be like applying to everyone in the same exact way. This is a liberation of your strength so that you can find what works for you. We love a good liberation moment. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love that. And can I also say too, I really appreciate that as a coach, you're not putting everybody into a box because I think what happens when people hear assessment, especially if you come out of corporate and you've had to take all the different assessments throughout the years, you're like, ugh, another assessment, another assessment. And I know you and I are very aligned this way in how we work with assessments in our coaching it's a starting point. It's mm -hmm. a starting point for you. It is not the be all end all for it. But I will tell you strength of all the assessments I've worked with, strengths is the one that almost everyone I've I've actually I would probably say everyone I've worked with has found value in it in some way where I've gotten a lot of pushback from other assessments that I've done. Strengths is the one that for some reason just speaks to people. We love to hear it. Yes. Yes. Any other actions that you want to share with the audience? Yeah. I think the one last thing that I would say is like, as you are going throughout your day, as you're navigating your career change, your pivot, is take a look at what your typical day, week, month looks like and start to take note of when does it feel like you're using your strengths? Because that is going to be a number one note of like, why do I feel the way that I do right now? And what we are always looking for in strengths is we're looking for ways to repeat the way that we're doing. So if you're finding something that works for you, use that as an archetype for yourself. Use that as a a way to repeat this process and figure out, well, how do I translate this to this area? If you feel like you're doing well at like your to-do list, how do you, but you feel like you're struggling with your like social relationships, how can you find a way to repeat and move this process over? Because really this is about like finding things that work for you so that you feel like you're engaged in your whole life. Strength is a lot of people at face value is about your work is about your job. But again, like we're talking this like liberation of strengths, like your strengths are also about your life. So how are you making sure that you're taking care of fully for yourself, who you are, and how are ways that we can integrate that to make it so that we are meeting our like self care, our well being goals? Yes. Okay, Kyle, oh, you got my brain turning again. And I want to have another 20 minute conversation about some of the things <laughs> that you just said. But I also want to make sure that we're respectful of the audience this time. So I'm going to, I'm going to park it for, for a little bit. I might put it into like a social media post or something, but oh my gosh, I just love talking about this. I want to give a plug for your podcast. I know that's one of the things that you wanted to promote today. I want to promote it for you because 
this podcast is going to be from what I understand, because I was a guest on it. <laughs> so you can listen to my episode, but it's really looking practically at how people are utilizing their strengths. And I think that that's so important to understand. As you said earlier, it's not going to look the same for everyone. And so I love what you're doing with your podcast. This is a brand new podcast that you're starting. I, it'll, will, I think it'll be live by the time your episode yes. goes live. Um, but I highly encourage you, if you are interested in strengths, check out Kyle's podcast. I know that I'll be promoting it regardless uh, because it's a topic that really aligns with what I do, but check it out. It's going to help give you an understanding of strengths in such a more practical way. And Kyle, where can people connect with you? Yeah. So the places that I like to hang out is I have my creative fun moments over on LinkedIn. I enjoy just like having fun making a reel or I really genuine conversation is my thing. So if like, as long as I can manage my inbox, I almost always try and send people a message when we connect and learn about who you are. So Find me on Instagram at Kyle Johan Baker. I'm also on LinkedIn. I do a little bit more of the learn about big questions types of things, as well as like, I love engaging with others, obviously. <laughs> and then um, I would say the other place is just like Julia said, for my podcast, it's going to be coming out. It's already out by now. It started on February 6th. Julia's episode is actually one of the first episodes. So get excited to hear that. The podcast is on Spotify, Apple, Google. Uh, I think it's on like most all the places, mm -hmm. but uh, take a look for that. It's love, comma, your strengths. And I am really excited to continue this conversation as you are looking to get advice for yourself for your organization. I both do both one-on-one -on -one and organizational training. And really it all comes from a place of helping you be yourself, bring yourself and really helping your team. You feel like you can do that and do your best work, live your best life. Yes. Ah, oh, that is such a perfect wrap up for this episode. And I highly recommend people follow you on Instagram because I follow you and it's such a good time. It's so fun. And I feel like people really get to see your personality and understand who you are. Kyle, thank you so much for being a guest. This was really wonderful. Yes. Thanks everybody. And I hope to see you soon. Mm -hmm.